Welcome back to another edition of Cool Album Covers. I'm Mark Major. Uh, Rich Bachelor. Funny thing happened, as often is noted, when a bunch of uh, gentlemen got back from World War II. Those that were not reeking of the French pox from the European theater were fresh back from the South Pacific, where they were in the mood for th all things tiki and all things involving bare-chested ladies banging bongos or something weird like that. Lots of these albums came out by guys who already had a career, like Stan Kenton, like Les Baxter. So our first cover, Stan Kenton, Cuban Fire, this is actually your record. It was introduced to me by a friend a long time ago who bought it on CD and was like, I don't get it. You know, I don't think this is, like, Cuban. And even then, I was like, well... No, I, I don't think that Stan Kenton or anybody named something anything like Stan Kenton is going to make really good Cuban music, but I can tell that this is going to have kitsch value of its own, at very least. I, you know, the crazy Cuban there, that's not a member of Stan Kenton's band. What's the songs actually sound like? Uh, they're ridiculous orchestral over the top. They sound like the scenes in The Godfather 2 when they're getting ready to whack Johnny Ola. Right. This next one, Les Baxter, Tambu. Do you own this one as well? I do. I do. I own one that doesn't have a big piece big of masking piece of tape. Masking tape. Yeah. Well, what if I told you that was Les Original? Baxter's personal, <laughs> personal tape? <laughs> Most of Martin Denny's catalog are actually Les Baxter tunes, but they're kind of better because he doesn't do it with this Ewok Village orchestra and choir, <laughs> whereas Martin Denny does it with a couple guys banging on drums, a guy making a bird call sound. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome, because, like, I think Les Baxter already had a career before World War II, and in the sharply post-war world to follow, when all of a sudden the United States was like, hey, you know what, we ought to own Hawaii. I mean, like, really, really own Hawaii. No, stay with me now. And they started, you know, people who had up until that time been making battleships, like Henry Kaiser, all of a sudden started investing in resort places in Hawaii. And that's why on the back of the very first Martin Denny record, he's like, whoever, what anonymous drone wrote this, is like, everyone knows about fabulous Henry Kaiser's resort on Oahu, and the house band there won Martin Denny. And, like, you know, his, you know, four guys backing him up, including uh, what's his name who started the Baja Marimba band? Arthur Lyman? Julius Wechter. But yes, you're right. Arthur Lyman was also I, in that band. Which, there may be an Arthur Lyman cover coming up later in the season. Uh, let's move on, shall we? Oh, Mambo Jumbo. This one is mine. <laughs> and it's a really red cover because they shot with some sort of primitive white screen and then filtered it. So <laughs> everything's red. <laughs> it looks like it's a Perez Prado record, but yeah. it's really just the members of his orchestra oh. doing his songs, which, uh, does that mean it's him or not him? Hmm. I have several Perez Prado records. They're pretty good stuff, and frankly, a lot of the tunes are ones you would recognize. Next record, Limbo Party by Ivy Pete and his Limbo Maniacs. Mm. Of all things... You probably can count on being disappointed by that record. <laughs> like, uh, for as awesome as it looks to make that poor woman go under that limb of fire. You know, and I don't know what's up with the guy, like, about to receive the baby or about to... <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> there's definitely there's definitely some sort of uh, relationship between the woman and the way she's dancing and the man about to receive her. Please, um, Dr. Limbo! It's almost religious. I mean, you've got like three wise men in the back with halos, <laughs> with crowns. It's It really, you know, and that, don't wait. look too long at Limbo Party because there's a lot of deep stuff that goes into this cosplay cover. Yeah, that, that white imperialist in the back there is like, I cannot wait to <laughs> seize the casinos of Havana. Anyway. Here's the king of guys beating on drums yeah, loudly. An emaciated zombie. That guy's been dead since 1912. <laughs> you wouldn't know what to look at him, though. It's a, his handler was way diligent. So, uh, Rich, this is your album. What does it sound like? As I recall, it's another one that is remarkably boring when you consider how insane the cover is. It makes it sound like there's an orchestra, a big band, like a hot swinging thing, but actually what it is is field recordings of actual Africans playing African drums in like 1955 or something. And yeah, it's totally a National Geographic or folk, folkway recordings of like a bunch of guys jumping around in the desert, banging on drums, destined to never ever get paid by, you know, RCA. Uh, also, it looks as if they shrunk the man to the size of a, uh, a chess piece. <laughs> yeah, <you'd hardly laughs> What is the thing next to him? <laughs> yeah, you'd hardly know looking at him that uh, he used to be Archbishop of Canterbury. Um, <laughs> Respected. <laughs> yeah, David. Yeah, Mr. Prime Minister to Guy Warren sounds to you. And, We're all out of time. And thus concludes another fantastic episode.